Hi everybody, today we have a fantastic workout. We are focusing on strength. We're using the TRX suspension trainer and one of my favorite toys, the TRX rip trainer. This is going to be a 45 minute workout. Um, we're looking at kind of the intermediate levels, but don't worry, I have lots of options for all levels for sure. After our warm up, we're going to go through eight different exercises. Every single exercise, we're gonna do four sets. 30 seconds of work, followed by 30 seconds of rest, trying to progressively make things harder every single time. Then we'll do a little bit of stretching and call it a day. So let's get this party started. We're gonna start with our regular warm up. We're gonna have our standing rollouts in the TRX suspension trainer. So bring your straps to mid length, stand facing away from the anchor point. Find that nice, strong, active plank. Find your core tight, brace shoulders down and back, and let's roll those hands out just a touch and then bring them right back directly beneath the shoulders. Now, today I want you to imagine that you have a piece of coal between your butt cheeks. And by the end of this 45 minute workout, you're gonna have the most beautiful diamond because you've been squeezing it so hard. Now your body's in that nice straight plank, letting your shoulders fall away from your ears. Five, four, three, two and one squat row combo straps stay at mid-length stand facing the anchor point lean it back just a touch walk it under drop that bucket as low as you can go squat plank and row big squeeze and plank drop the bucket squat plank row and plank alternate between those two enjoy that stretch on the bottom really drop your bucket down nice and low for an awesome squat and big squeeze behind those shoulder blades to wake up the upper back as we get into this workout. We have five, four, three, two. This one feels so good. And one, but now for my favorite warm up exercise T Rex forward lunge with Y fly. Strap stay at mid length, stand facing away from the anchor point in your Frankenstein position. Take a nice big step forward with your right foot, bend the left knee down, stretch, really press those hands up, letting the shoulders fall away from your ears, pressing into the handles, come back, find that plank. When you come to that top position, make sure your body weight is directly above your feet, so I'm not really leaning into the straps. And that allows me for a nice stretch on the bottom. If it feels like too much of a stretch, just move back a little bit toward the anchor. If you're not feeling that stretch in your hips or in your chest, walk forward a little bit. We have 10 seconds left. Making sure the back knee is bending toward the floor to really allow your hip flexors to open up. Three, two, and one. Single leg hip hinge. So straps are still at mid length, stand facing the anchor point. Walk it back with those arms straight out in front, pressing down on the handles to feel your core engage. Center your left foot to the anchor. Raise your right heel up as you hinge your body forward, stretch for a second, and return. Try not to set your right foot down unless you feel like you're falling. Those of you that do some yoga, this should feel like your warrior three in yoga. So are you keeping your hips square to the floor? My belly button should be drawing a straight line below me. My pinky toe should be pointing straight down toward the floor. Five, four, three, two, one more hinge. And switch feet, keep going. Right now we're establishing that balance. We're connecting your brain to your body. We're also engaging your core by pressing your hands down into the handles. Um, if you've done some of my other workouts, you'll notice I do pretty much the same warm up every time. Because quite frankly, it's a darn good warm up. <laughs> it makes mobile what should be mobile. It gets your core engaged. It connects your brain to your body. And then you don't have to think quite as hard at the beginning of all my workouts. Nice stretch and return. Whew, 10 seconds left on this side. Remember your ears and shoulders, hips and your back heel should stay in alignment. So if you're giving me that pyramid butt, you don't have to go quite as high. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's do some lateral lunges. So staying right where you are, but give me a nice wide stance, pointing your toes directly forward. Body weight above your feet, bend the right knee, get a nice stretch down. Pull yourself up, Ooh, bend your left knee, get a nice stretch down. And pull yourself back up. You're just shifting your weight side to side. Enjoy the stretch, move those hips. Today we're doing a lot of lunging. That's a big focus of our workout today, lunging and rotating with that rip trainer too. So we wanna move the hips around, get ready. 
for all of the lunging. Five, four, three, two, and one. Finally, your TRX golfer's rotation with a chest opener. So I'll show you in two different directions. Pressing down on the handles, rotate it all the way up, stick the landing, tension on the straps, drop the arms down and up and return. So from this angle here, I'm pressing downward, I'm rotating up, dropping those arms down and back up. For more of a stretch, I can move even further back behind the anchor. Rotate up, big stretch, and return. Getting a lot of mobility in the shoulders as I do this one. Oh, that feels good. And five, keeping tension on the straps. Four, three, two, all right. Should we do this workout? I think so. So remember, we're doing four sets of every exercise. Our first exercise we're doing, one of my all-time favorite TRX exercises, your TRX lunges. So you're gonna bring your straps to mid-calf length. Okay, now getting your toes in the foot cradles is probably the hardest part of this exercise. So watch me first, and then I'll talk you through it. I'm gonna grab both handles, the rubber part, not the foot cradles, the handles with my right hand. I'm gonna bend my left knee, Look at the poo on the bottom of my left shoe. Point that toe, pop it through both foot cradles. All right, your turn. Both handles, right hand, bend your left knee, pop that toe through. Awesome, now let's meet on the ground here. I'm slightly in front of my anchor point. So if you have a door anchor, you're definitely in front of it. Overhead anchor, scooch forward a bit. My front heel is one foot in front of my back knee. I'm gonna squeeze my buns, come straight up. But remember your safety if you're falling down is right back down to the ground. Let's give this a shot for 30. Two and one. Squeeze your buns, come on up. Chest is up, my back knee hovers two inches off the ground and it's coming straight down to that same spot that it started. So it's one foot behind my front heel. The chest is up tall and proud, really squeezing through my right bum as I do this. And if you feel like you're getting in trouble, just grab the ground for safety. 10 seconds left. Slow and controlled is the name of our strength game today. Five, four, three, two, and one. To get out of their single leg butt kick. Now we've got 30 seconds. Let's get in on that other side. I'm gonna have you grab both handles with your left hand now. Bend your right knee. Look at the poo on the bottom of your right shoe and press down. Make sure you're slightly in front of your anchor, and then meet me down on the ground. Your front heel is one foot in front of your back knee. We're gonna get going in 10 seconds. If you wanna do a practice one with me, squeeze your buns, drive it up. I feel a little different on that side. Three, two, one, let's go. Back knee down, one foot behind your front heel. Squeeze the buns, driving it right back up. Hey, how's your posture? Remember, your shoulders are ear poison. You're going straight down like an elevator and straight up like an elevator, not back and forth like an escalator. A way you can know you're doing this correctly is again if that back knee almost touches the ground about one foot behind your front heel. Five, four, three, two, and one. Single leg butt kick to get out of there. I'm gonna give you a more challenging option if you wanna try it on this one. You don't have to. You can do these same T-Rex lunges again if you'd like. All right, now we're gonna pop your left toe back in the foot cradles. Both handles in your right hand, bend the left knee, pop that toe in. Option for this set, remember if you need to, you can start on the ground. I'm gonna have you lower down, now I'm working on my right leg. Arms out in front, they rotate over the top of my right leg and come back up. You wanna try that? Two, one, let's go. Lower down, 90-90 with those knees, rotate the shoulders, bring it back in come up. Now make sure your knee keeps tracking forward the entire time. It might be tempted to wobble in or out. Make sure you keep the right bum tight so that knee's not wobbling. Are those shoulders down and back? Nice and slow. You're not going to get through many reps in 30 seconds. The focus is on strength, on really loading those muscles today. Five, four, three, two, and one. Single leg butt kick to get out of their other side. Again, you can add that rotation, you don't have to. Both handles in your left hand, bend the right knee, pop that right toe through both of those foot cradles. Find your balance if you need to start on the ground, totally fine. So on this side, if you wanna add that rotation, both knees go to 90, rotate over the top of that leg, and come right back up, going in five, four, woo, three, two, and one, let's go. Lowering down, nice and controlled. 
Now, what I love about doing unilateral training or training one side of your body at a time is you can definitely feel which side is stronger and which side needs more work. And you can really challenge that side that needs more work. In my case, you might see me a little more wobbly. It's my left side definitely needs some more work. 10 seconds left. Whew. Nice and controlled. Shoulders away from those ears. And we survived. Good. We're going to move on to your TRX rip trainer now. I'm going to do your rip squat rotation. I'm going to grab a sip of water. Now, with your rip trainer, we've got five zones I'm going to talk about today. At okay, the very end of your bar here, this is zone one. The second part of this handle is zone two. The middle is zone three. This first part of this handle is zone four. And then the very end of the bar is zone five, closest to the cord. If I have palms down in the middle, that's called mid zones. For your rip squat rotation, I'm going to stand sideways to the anchor. My shoulder is lined up with the anchor point. My left hand is palm down zone one. My right hand is palm up zone four. End range of motion, feet are a little wider than shoulder width apart. Imagine you're standing in the middle of a clock. I'm going to point the end of my bar over to about 10 o'clock. You ready? Let's go. Squat down, stand up, push, pull, point to 10 o'clock. Nice and slow and controlled. We're focusing on strength. I know it's tempting to really go crazy and whip this thing around, but right now we're focusing on slow, controlled movement. Now, when you rotate back toward the anchor, make sure there's no slack on your cord. If there is, you can either move away from the anchor a little bit further, or you can just not quite bring your bar quite as far back so you can stop at like one o'clock. Awesome, let's do that other side now. So now I'm gonna have my left shoulder toward the anchor. My right hand is palm down, my left hand is palm up. Again, I'm still standing sideways. Now I'm inside that clock. I'm gonna start with the end of my bar, the power end, pointing over at two o'clock over here. Then I'll squat down, point toward the anchor, and push pull, nice and slow, back to two o'clock. We're going in five, four, three, two, and one. Squat down, chest is up, pulling my right hand in, driving my left arm around. Remember, slow and controlled and deliberate is the name of the game. A lot of people think that the rip trainer is just for speed and power, but as you're probably feeling right now, it's an amazing tool for developing strength, especially core strength. We have five, four, three, two, and one. All right, our third set, we're gonna come back other side to the anchor. I'm gonna have you add a little bit of challenge. You can either move further away from the anchor point, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my right hand and bring it to zone three instead of zone four. So it's on that yellow part of the bar right now. So we're standing sideways, left hand palm down, zone one, right hand palm up, zone three. Find that end range of motion at eight or 10 o'clock. <laughs> and slowly, here we go, two and one, controlled. Squat down, push, pull, bring it right back. Now, once again, think about that neck space. I should be able to see those long, dangly earrings hanging down from your ears. When you squat, once again, you're going down like an elevator, just like our T-Rex lunges. And you're pulling that left hand into your rib cage, not just pushing the right arm around. It's kind of tough to do these slow, isn't it? Five, four, three, two, and one. One more set of these. We're going to turn it around to the other side. So now my left side is facing the anchor. I'm going to have my right hand palm down zone one. You can either scoot out a little further if you want a bigger challenge, or do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to have my left hand palm up at zone three on the yellow part of the bar. Feet a little wider than shoulder width apart. Enjoy this rest break. You're really going to appreciate it later. Bring the power end of my bar around to two o'clock. Go in three, two, one. Squat down, chest is up, Whew. rotate back around. Now the trick to this is not just pushing with my left arm, but pulling my right hand, engaging behind that right shoulder blade, right back toward my rib cage. I'm squatting as low as I safely can and moving slowly through this. Squat and use that strength from your legs as you come up for the rotation. Five, four, three, two, and 
one. You survived that one. Let's go back to the TRX suspension trainer. We're gonna do your TRX sprinter starts. I love, love, love this exercise. Your straps will be fully lengthened. The first two sets, we're gonna go right leg, then left leg. We're just gonna do really slow and controlled, make sure your form is awesome. Second two sets, I'm gonna give the option of adding a hop to these. You're going to feel these here and in here. Straps are fully lengthened. Stand facing away from the anchor point. I want you to let go of those handles and loop the straps right underneath your armpits and make sure they stay bolted there, not letting them slide at all. Now I'm gonna have you center your right foot to the anchor and step your left foot way back. Pick up your right heel. You're barely touching that right heel to the ground. Okay, and then you're gonna pick up the left knee Hold for a second. Notice how I'm dorsiflexing, I'm flexing my foot. Reach it back, control. Three, two, and one. Pressing up, hold for a second, stick the landing. A little bit of balance there, isn't it? And control on the way back. It should feel kind of like a step up in the weight room, like a weighted step up. And this is another one, like the rip trainer, where you want to just crank them out. I want you to try to go slow, <laughs> which makes it a little bit meaner. Slowly reach way back, controlling on the way down. Now you're really trying not to use that left foot. I'm barely touching my left foot. All the work is in my right thigh. Two, one, switch it up. Center your left foot to the anchor, same position. Or you can stop and hang out for a second because we still have 25 seconds. Enjoy this rest break. You can even stretch out your quads a little bit if you'd like. Oh, you're gonna need it, I promise. All right, let's center that left foot out to the anchor. Reach your right leg back. Now again, my left heel's off the ground. I'm barely putting any pressure on my right foot. My body's straight and planked. My eyes are out ahead of me. Three, two, and one. Slowly drive the right leg up, flexing your right foot, and then slowly reach back and tap. Barely touching the right foot to the ground. Chest is tall and proud, driving into the floor with the ball of my left foot. You're not gonna get a lot of reps out and that's okay. 15 seconds to go. Should feel like you're doing that step up with a big heavy 80 pound weight vest on. Squeeze and drive. Five, four, whoo, three, two, and one. All right, let's add a hop to these sprinter starts now. So we're gonna bring it back to your right leg. Handles glued to the rib cage. We'll center that right foot to the anchor, big step back. Now, you're gonna hop forward, hop back, reach back. It's hop forward, hop back, barely touch my left leg. You got it? If you don't wanna hop, you don't have to hop. You can do the same thing we did in the first two sets. All right, shake it out, we're going in five. Reach that left leg back, three, two, and one. Hop forward, hop back, barely touch. Chest is up. The quads on that right leg should be on fire. Pressing through the floor, eyes out ahead of you slightly. Really squeezing that right bum. Big press. Yeah, this definitely hurts. My leg is definitely on fire. And I don't think I'm allowed to swear on camera, but you're welcome to at home. We've got five, four, three, two, and one. Ouch. All right, remember, the trick is to not push off your back leg. You're going to want to as you start getting tired, but make sure your front leg is doing all the work. We're going again in 20 seconds. Let's set up that sprinter start, left leg lead. So, hands at your rib cage, bolted. Remember, straps are in your armpits, not outside of your arms. Center your left foot, reach the right leg way back. Pick up the left heel, barely touching your right toe. Squeezing the left bum, hop forward, hop back, reset, let's go, bam. Again, I'm barely touching my right leg, but I'm really reaching it back. It's just a little bit of a hop, changing the speed of movement from those first two sets. Just enough to make my muscles really angry. <laughs> We're halfway there. <sighs> nice job, everybody. <sighs> we have five, four, three, two, and one. Oh my goodness, stretch out your quads for a second. That was awesome. We're moving into one of my favorite rip trainer exercises, the rip kayak row. I'm gonna grab a quick sip of water, we're going in 45 seconds. And I think I'm gonna take this bad boy down. So you're gonna grab your rip trainer and I'm gonna have you have left hand palm up, zone one, 
right hand palm down, zone four. Then you're gonna turn and face the anchor point. Okay, remember to make it harder, you walk backwards to make it easier, you walk in closer. Now your kayak row, I'm gonna pull my right hand down, push the left arm down, and then wrap it all the way around. I'll show you on this side. Push down and come way out along the side of my body. Nice and slow, going in three, two, and one. Pushing my left hand down, driving the right arm back, and keeping your right arm as straight as you can as you come all the way around that movement. Chest is tall and proud, facing the anchor. But see how it's not just my right arm pulling and driving? My left arm is kind of stabbing that oar down into the water. And then I'm coming up slowly away from my body. The straighter my right arm is, the more challenging this exercise is. Your core is really engaging. Two and one. Let's switch sides. So now I'm going to have you bring your right hand palm up zone one, left hand palm down zone four, and then you're going to turn and stand facing the anchor point again. I'll take you through one or two reps. We still have 20 seconds before we start. So you'll squat down, dip your oar in the water, bring it way out to the side of your body, and up and over the top. The straighter that left arm is, the harder this is going to be. We're going in five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down, way around, and reset. Stabbing the right arm down, reaching the left arm over the top. Nice, strong core engagement. Working that rip trainer in a full circle. You dip it down and wrap it around. We have 15 seconds left. Down and drive and around. 10 seconds to go. Big reach with that bar. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now, second two sets, bigger challenge. I'm gonna do the same thing we did with those rip squat rotations. I'm gonna have you bring your right hand to the middle of the bar to zone three. So left hand is palm up, zone one. Right hand palm down, zone three. If that first set was too hard, then just bring your right hand a little bit closer to the court again. We're going in 10 seconds. This is gonna be a lot harder. Stand facing in five, four, three, two, and one. Dip that over in the water, reach it way around. Now control it, don't let it whip around. You control the rip trainer, don't let it control you. The straighter that right arm is, the more your core has to engage, the more you're resisting that rotation from the rip trainer. Chest is up proud. I'm stabbing my left arm down, reaching my right arm all the way through. And I have five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna bring my right hand palm up, zone one, left hand palm down, zone three for that bigger challenge. If you don't want the bigger challenge, Slide that left hand down closer to the cord. I'm gonna turn and stand facing the anchor point. Remember, also for a bigger challenge, you can walk backwards a little bit if you'd like. But make sure you can really keep that left arm straight and away from your body. Going in five, four, three, two, and one. Dip that oar down, wrap it around, and come on back to that position. Dip it down. Remember, I'm using my right arm to help drive that oar into the water. Left arm straight as I bring it back controlled. Dip it and reach it around. And again, you're in charge of that rip trainer. Don't let it whip you around. You be the boss. Nice and controlled. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's put this rip trainer away. We're gonna move on down to the ground with your TRX suspension trainer for those TRX hamstring bicycles. We have four sets of them, and I'm gonna give you ways to make them progressively more challenging as we go. I'm gonna have you bring your straps to mid-calf length, so handle slightly below knee height. And then you'll have a seat facing the anchor point. You still have like 30 seconds, so if you need some water, feel free to grab it. Have a seat facing the anchor point, and making sure those foot cradles are dangling just above your toes. Now to get your heels in, two fingers in each foot cradle, Hold those hands wide in a Christmas tree. Roll it back so your knees tuck into your chest and drop those heels on top of your fingers. Head and shoulders are down. Relax your head and neck on the ground. Option one, you can keep your bum on the ground, but I think you can handle option two. In five, lift your bum up. Four, three, 
two and one. One knee comes in at a time. Now, the goal is to keep constant downward pressure on those foot cradles. So your straps should never be sawing up and down. If you feel them sawing, slow it down a little bit and make sure you're driving your heel down as you're pulling it in towards your body. And my head and shoulders stay on the ground. Eyes are up toward the ceiling. We have five, whoo, four, three, two, and one. You have 30 seconds. Take a break. You can sit up, reach over those legs. How are your hamstrings doing? Now, if you want to make that one a little bit more challenging, if you think you're ready, scoot your bum back a bit. The further back behind your anchor point, the more challenging this exercise is. So we're going again in 15 seconds. Let those legs hang dangle. Relax, stretching through the hamstrings. And then let's lay down again. We're going in 10 seconds. Second set of four. And five, four, three, two, and one. Bum up, pull one knee in at a time. Now you'll notice that you're further back behind the anchor, and I don't mean like scooch back two inches, I mean like a foot or two. You'll feel more resistance as you pull that heel toward your body. If you need to make it easier, you can slide forward. Although if you have your straps on a door anchor, you can't slide too far forward, otherwise your feet hit that door. We have 10 seconds to go. Really pressing your shoulder blades into the ground. Toes back towards your shins. Amazing. All right, stretch that out a little bit here. Reaching towards your toes. So third set, should we make it even harder? I think so. So if you want to add a bigger challenge yet, you can still stay scooched back behind the anchor, but this time we're going to have you lift your hands up off the ground. Just your hands, not your head too. Just your hands, that's going to make you feel a little less stable, a little more core engagement is going to be needed for these hamstring bicycles. Laying back, I'm going to have my hands up. This is optional for you. Two and one. Push down, drag it in. Quick reminder, make sure your straps aren't sawing back and forth. You're really pressing down with the heel as you pull it in towards your bum. And you're keeping those hips lifted off the ground. Head and shoulders are leaving that nice sweat print on the floor. Push down, drag it in. Focus is on strength. We're moving slow and controlled. We have five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Whew, one more set here. Stretch out those hamstrings. You can take your heels out of the foot cradles. I just like this hang dangly feeling here. Now, for this last set, I'm going to combine all of it. I'm going to scoop back even further and lift my hands up off the ground. Dun, dun, dun. Are we ready for this? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for this. We're going in 10 seconds. Come on down. Hands up. Squeeze your buns. Lift them up. Two and one. Let's go. One knee in at a time. Hands are up. Ugh. I'm really pushing down and pulling my heels in toward my bum, putting that downward pressure into the foot cradles to have been able to lift my hips up nice and high. You've got this. This is our last set of these bad boys. How are those hamstrings feeling? <laughs> 10 seconds left. Whew. Mine are saying some naughty words. Five, four, three, two. Oh my goodness, you did it. Oh, I got good news and bad news. Good news is we're done with this. Bad news is we're going back to that rip trainer again for your rip lunge row. So I'm gonna take these straps down so I have a little bit more room to move. Grabbing onto your rip trainer, we're going to hold your handles in what I call mid-zone position. So they're palms down, kind of splitting the difference um, of each handle. You're gonna stand facing away, or stand facing toward the anchor point, and then I'm gonna have you start at the end range of motion. You can just practice one or two, because these feel really weird. The middle of the bar is right at the middle of my chest. I step one foot back into my lunge. Now I'm gonna step together, straighten my arms out, make sure there's still tension on the, stra or on the cord, and then step back with the other foot, bend the knees, come right back into the rib cage. So you'll notice the middle of my torso is in line with the anchor and the middle of my torso is in line with the middle of the bar. Start at the end range, let's go. Step together, straighten your arms, step back, pull. You might need to take a second and pause between each rep. Now if you can see behind my shoulder blades, I'm really engaging behind those shoulder blades, but keeping my torso and chest square toward where the rip trainer is connected. Imagine that if there are two cables or two cords on the rip trainer, it would make a perfect triangle and you are splitting the difference of the base 
of the triangle. Two and one. Awesome. 30 seconds. Let's turn the rip trainer around. So now my left hand is my power hand. My left hand is closer to the core of the rip trainer. My palms are down. Mid zones, the middle of each handle. And once again, standing facing the anchor. We still have 15 seconds for you to catch your breath. Focus is strength, slow and controlled. Middle of the bar, middle of my chest. I'm going to start at the end range. Step one leg back. We're alternating legs. Three, two, and one. Stand up, extend. Step back, squeeze behind the shoulder blades. And you're alternating. Resisting that rotation. Taking your time with these lunges. It's a lot harder than it looks, isn't it? <laughs> Takes a lot of balance. I call these drunken lunges because the first time you do them, you feel like you're inebriated trying to keep your body straight up and down. Big squeeze, 10 seconds left. Step and pull. Three, two, and one. All right, we're going to do that again. But guess what? Third set, we want to make it more challenging. Option one, you can move further back behind the anchor. Or, like what I've been doing, I'm going to have you change your grip. Right hand palm down zone three, left hand palm down zone one. Standing facing the anchor, stepping one foot back, the middle of your grip is now going to go to the middle of your chest. So end range of motion, one foot back, middle of the bar, middle of my chest. Two, one. Step together, straighten my arms, pull back. Now I'm really resisting rotation. You see that little wiggle as I come up? I'm trying to fight that. I'm trying to be in control of this bar. I'm not letting the bar and the cord control me. Although sometimes I think it might be winning. <laughs> we have 10 seconds left. Whew. Big squeeze behind those shoulder blades. Tummy is tight. You feel your glutes engaged trying to resist that rotation. Three, two, and one. Oh, that was crazy. Other side. Right hand palm down zone one. Left hand palm down zone three. Or you can go back to that mid zone position and just scooch a little further back for a little more tension. I'm kind of enjoying resisting this rotation. I don't know if enjoying is the right choice of word. We're going in 10 seconds, guys. Palms down, standing facing. I'm going to find my end range of motion, squeezing behind my shoulder blades in three. Two and one. Step together, resist that rotation. Step back, pull and squeeze. Alternating legs. Step and squeeze and return. Buns are tight. Body is super straight. And engaging behind those shoulder blades. Everything's tight, keeping that space between my ears and my shoulders. Five, four, three. Two and one. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna feel that tomorrow for sure. All right, we're moving back to the TRX suspension trainer. I'm gonna do a really cool one called the TRX crossing lunge. So before we do the TRX lunge with one foot in suspension, straps are at mid calf length. Now I'm gonna be kind of standing sideways to the suspension trainer for these guys. So once again, I'm gonna put one foot in the foot cradles. So I'm gonna grab both handles with my right hand pop my left toe in the foot cradles, and now I'm going to hop just a little bit over to the left side of the anchor. So see how my left foot is dangling behind me? And my chest is up tall. You still have 15 seconds to figure out this position. And I'm going to push my left heel behind me as I lower down and come straight back up. So I'm going to push that heel back and come back up. So now we're adding a bit of rotation to that TRX lunge. Ready? Here we go. Bend both knees, press that heel back, come back up. Notice how my left knee is moving past my right heel. Really squeezing the buns on that side. Lower down, drive it up. It's a really smaller glute muscle driven exercise. Might even feel a little bit crampy right here. Chest is up. And five. Four, controlled, three, two, and one. To get out of there, single leg butt kick. Maybe, or maybe I'll just stay in this one today. All right, now we're gonna do the other side. So now, I'm gonna grab both handles with my left hand, and I'm gonna pop my right toe into those foot cradles. And I'm gonna move slightly over to the right 
of my anchor point. So see how my right leg is just kind of hanging right behind me? And then when I lunge down, I'm going to push that right heel behind me so the knee goes past my heel as I come up. Two and one. Let's go. Set number two. Lower down. Drive it back up. Chest is up tall and proud. I'm really grounding my left foot into the floor, and I'm using my right foot in those foot cradles for a lot of pressure and help with my balance as well. Notice how my chest is still square forward. Oh, boy. This is that left side again. <laughs> 10 seconds left. Lowering down. Back knee comes past that front heel. Five, four, three, two, and one. Single leg butt kick. We get to do it again. All right. So both handles in your right hand. Bend that left knee. Pop that left toe into those foot cradles. Scooch to the left just a touch so that left foot is dangling behind you and kind of hanging directly beneath the anchor point. Chest is up tall and proud. We're going in five, four, three, two, and one. I'm pushing that left leg back, driving into the floor with my right foot, lowering down like an elevator, up like an elevator. I don't have any hinge in my hips. My torso is nice and straight and perfectly tight. We have 10 seconds left, pressing into the floor. After this, we just have one rip trainer exercise. Then we stretch, and then you've made it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Single leg butt kick to get out of there. Finally, one more set on this other side here. So TRX crossing lunge. Straps are still mid-calf length. Grab both handles with your left hand. I'm going to have you bend your right knee, pop that toe in the foot cradles, and notice how I'm slightly sideways to the anchor point again. My right foot is hanging behind my body, pretty much directly beneath this anchor point here. Remember, if you run into trouble, just grab the floor. Three, two, and one. Bringing my right knee past my left heel, pressing through the floor to come right back up. Shoulders falling away from the ears, trying to bonk your head on the ceiling as you come straight up to the top. I'm going to fall on one of these videos, and then you'll get a good chuckle as you finish your workout. And I'm trying to peel myself off the floor. We have five, four, three, two, and one. Single leg butt kick to get out of there. We have one more rip trainer exercise to go. I'm going to grab a sip of water. We've got about 50 seconds before we start this final exercise. It's called the rip punch. So if you have any pent up aggression at all, this is where you get to take it out. We'll do those first two sets super slow like we've been doing. And just for fun, we'll speed up those last two sets to get kind of aggressive and powerful. And I have you grab your rip trainer. Palms down. Left hand palm down, zone one. Right hand palm down, zone four. You're gonna start sideways to the anchor point, but the end range of motion, I'm gonna pull my left hand into my rib cage, drive my right arm forward, and stop just before the cord touches my body. Also, look at my fingers. I've released my pinky and my ring finger, so I'm not cranking on my wrist. I come back, make sure there's no slack on your cord, pull back on the left, push around with the right, so it's not just pushing, it's pushing and pulling. Two and one, nice and controlled. Bring it back, my left hand pulls in, my right arm drives around. Also, take a look at my right heel. See how it's picking up and pivoting around, allowing my hips to travel with me. That takes pressure off of your knee and off of your back, and it allows you to be more powerful when we start to pick up the speed very shortly for our grand finale here. 10 seconds left. If you wanna make this one harder, remember you can change this grip. Oh, that's a lot harder. Two, one, let's turn it around, other side. This is a rip punch, <coughs> excuse me. Right hand palm down, zone one. Left hand palm down, zone four. Standing sideways, but let's find the end range of motion. My right hand comes into my rib cage. My left arm extends. Remember, releasing the pinky and ring finger on this side and stopping just before the cord hits my body. I'll bring it back controlled. I'm going to pull my right hand in, drive the left arm around, and stick that landing. Go in in three, two, and one. Bring it back controlled. Push, pull, drive the right arm in, extend that left arm around. Right arm pulls in, bam. Make sure I'm pivoting on my left heel, driving the hips around to stick the landing at the end range of motion. 
nice and slow and controlled. Remember, for more challenge, walk further away from the anchor. If you need to make it easier, walk back, but don't walk so far back that you get slack when you rotate toward the anchor. Three, two, and one. All right, as promised. We have two more 30-second sets, and then we stretch. So let's add some speed and power to these sets just to end with a little bit of excitement here. So rip punch, left hand palm down zone one, right hand palm down zone four. Unless you want a challenge, you can slide it to zone three. We're gonna find the end range of motion. Now remember, it's a push and it's a pull and it's a plank and it's a pivot. Oh my gosh. So slowly bring it back controlled, and then you're going to stick the landing. Ready? Here we go. And Stop with that cord just before it touches your body. Picking up the heel, trying to get the cord to wiggle. Ha. Don't forget to use your left arm as you drive through whatever those muscles have left. This is your grand finale today. Five, four, three, two, ha, and one, other side. 30 seconds, catch your breath. That got your heart rate up, didn't it? <laughs> All right, final set of the day, and then we'll do some stretches, and we'll call it a day. Rip punch, other side, right hand palm down, zone one, left hand palm down, zone four, standing sideways, now let's rotate. So your right hand is at your rib cage, left arm extends, the cord stops, but just before it touches your arm. Now slowly bring it back, two, one, strike. Stopping just before that cord hits your body. Tss. Trying to get a little bit of wiggle on the cord. Whew. Lots of speed and power. Pivoting that left heel around, driving your left hip whew, into the exercise. Psh. 10 seconds left of our workout today. Tss. Tss. Five. Four, three, two, and one. You did it. Let's do a little bit of stretching and call it a day. Oh my goodness. So we did a bunch of lunging and a bunch of rotating. So we're gonna do my, the T-Rex Cossack stretch or Cossack lunge, really stretching through those hip muscles. I'm gonna have you take a nice wide stance, toes pointed directly forward, bend the left knee, lower your left bum toward the ground, rotate your right toe up toward the ceiling. The Cossacks are that group in Russia that wear the furry hats and do the really cool dance. I'm not gonna do that dance for you, but I will happily do this stretch. Now notice how I'm not leaning back. I've lowered straight down, so if I did let go of the handles, I wouldn't fall backwards. I'm gonna pull myself up, bend the right knee, rotate the left toe up toward the ceiling. Now you might not go down the slow, and that's totally cool. Go down as low as your hips will let you go. And then just side to side a few more times with this Cossack stretch. And one more time. All right, your TRX T-spine rotation. This is a cool one. I'm gonna have you stand sideways, strap stay at mid-length, stand sideways to the anchor point. I have my left arm holding on. I'm gonna bring my right arm over the top. Right foot in front, left foot behind. Inhale, exhale, drop my right arm open. Shoulders falling away from my ears. Eyes follow that thumb. Ah. And just breathe. Inhale and exhale. And slowly bring that up. Let's try that on the other side. You're welcome to hold that longer if you want. You can just pause the video and keep holding that. Right hand holds onto the handle. Walk it over to the right. Left foot in front, right foot behind. Bring that left arm over the top. Inhale, exhale, totally fall away from the anchor, keeping the right arm totally straight. And a few nice deep breaths here. Your body is as straight as a surfboard. Just enjoying that rotation through your thoracic spine. Five, four, three, two, and one. Finally, your chest and torso stretch. So my straps are at mid-length, standing facing away from the anchor. Walk it forward so your arms are in that T. Now step one foot in front, shoulders down and back, eyes up. Let those arms spread apart. You guys, you did this today. That was 45 minutes of strength using the T-Rex suspension trainer, the rip trainer. We did a bunch of lunging, a bunch of rotating. That was awesome. And I'm gonna have you move back just a touch, drop your right arm down, reach your left arm up over the top. Lots of tension on those straps. 
And then drop the left arm down, reach the right arm up and over the top. Oh, that feels so good. And then step your feet together, forward fold, take a bow. Just let the head hang, enjoy that hamstring stretch. And slowly roll that up. Congratulations, everybody. You survived another amazing workout. I cannot wait to see you soon. I love working out with you. Let's keep playing with this TRX equipment. It's amazing. Nice job today, everybody.